with this one. Hello, my name is Vivani Brown. And my name is Monica D'Amico. And we're doing interpreters in technology. All right, so today we're going to talk about the communication methods in the deaf community. We have things such as email, Skype, FaceTime, and a new technology called Glide. These things allow the deaf people, deaf people to communicate to either hearing people or de other other friends that are deaf without having to be directly in front of them, without having to sign, you know, just the basics. And this also allows them to be able to talk to a someone who maybe won't, they don't see all the time, talk to family who doesn't sign with them. So that's really helpful for them in their community. Also, we have a service called a service and a technology called the TTY, which is a, a typewriter that is in a deaf person's home. And what they would do is if they want to call somebody, like a hearing person or make a doctor's appointment, they type in their phone num the phone number that they want to go call, and then they type what they want to say, and then an interpreter will actually voice exactly what they typed to the hearing person. And then once the interpreter has said everything that the deaf person wrote, the hearing person will start voicing and talking, and then the interpreter then types that on a computer that is trans er, is sent to the typewriter for the deaf person to read, and then they go back and forth until their conversation is done. So that has that is one of the technologies that has really helped the deaf community. Something else that um, if you don't really know a lot about the deaf culture, stories are passed down. You know, your culture is really being right next to each other, being able to sign face to face. So technology has helped deaf people be able to communicate not being right there. You know, before texting and all that, they had to be sitting right next to each other to communicate because they just couldn't pick up the phone and call. So this is really where everything started with deaf community. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is helping the deaf person hear. Um, they're never fully going to hear like a hearing person, but these things either, you know, help them or have created hearing in their mind, in their brain. Um, things like hearing aids, they help amplify noise, but the thing with hearing aids is that they amplify all noise. They're not specific to my voice or your voice. They amplify all the noise in the room, the background, everything. They can be expensive, um, you know, they, they could be worn in the ear, on the outer ear, there's very many different types, different colors, different price ranges, but these only, they don't help you hear everything. Another, th another type of technology we have is cochlear implant, which is implanted in your brain and you have to retrain your brain to hear and this synthetically makes noise for a person who is deaf. They will never fully hear just like we are. Um, it's made up, it's very robotic sounding and you will see videos of people getting their hearing turned on and that's not necessarily what happens every time. Sometimes it doesn't work, it takes many doctor's appointments to go through the frequencies and to get it just right. One last thing we have is an FM system which was mostly used in like school settings or when um, a deaf person was in a job and had to hear like a hearing presenter and what it is is um, either your teacher or your presenter wears a microphone around their neck and they have a little speaker in front of a deaf person and whatever is said is transmitted to the deaf person through this microphone and then it is said and it's supposed to be louder so that the deaf person can hear you. So those are just some technologies that can help deaf people you know, hear a little bit better. Things that help around the house a vibrating says light alarm, flashing doorbell, and a TTY. The um, vibrating slash light alarm, um, it shakes the bed and flashes the light to signal to the deaf person that it's time to wake up in the morning or whenever they wake up from a nap. Um, the next thing is the flashing doorbell, which is self-explanatory that it lets somebody know, it lets the deaf person know that someone is at the door and ringing the doorbell. <coughs> the TTY is, um, like Monica said, it's also another communication tool that helps deaf people communicate with a hearing person and also with another deaf person. The deaf person will call the relay service center which is designated in their own state. They will call them and give them a number and the number that the relay service have they will call and connect them with the person that they're trying to connect and will facilitate the language between the two people. Um, things that help deaf people in everyday life, um, paper and writing utensil, it's like the basic form of communication for deaf people. When 
um, they're out and about and they meet here in person and they want to, um, for example, want to go to the mall, what not. And they have to pull over, say driving, they have to pull over. And the person that they see may not know sign language, they have to, you know, pull out a paper and pencil and write down, can they give them direction to wherever they're going? And this is like a basic form of communication would help deaf people through their everyday day day struggles within the hearing world. Um, the next thing is an interpreter, which is another form of communication for deaf people. Interpreters facilitate um, language between a deaf person and a hearing person. Um, the interpreter, when they say I, they're not meaning I, they're meaning my meaning I for themselves, the meaning for the deaf person. Um, the deaf person uses interpreter for a classroom setting, which the interpreter facilitates the um, language from the teacher to the student, and from the student to the teacher. In different settings, like maybe in a K to eight setting, the interpreter may play the role of a teacher and help the deaf person understand more of what is going on in the classroom. And in a high school setting, they just facilitate more of the language. In a hospital setting, um, the just like as it does in the classroom setting, it just facilitates the language between the doctor to the patient and the patient to the doctor. Um, my next um, Thing that help with deaf people is sign language, which is the best form of communication within the deaf community. Sign language is the deaf community language, and it's a language that is um, between deaf people, between, between deaf people, and also hearing people. And that's a form of cell phones, which is used doing. You can do video texting, you can do texting, and it's also um, a technology that is out here which um, some phone services provide, which is a relay services, like at and T, I I think, provide, which helps the deaf people um, communicate with other hearing, hearing, other hearing people and deaf people. And a video relay services, which is mostly used in hospital settings, which is another form of, um, of way of interpreters being there, not present, to facilitate communication between the patient and the doctor. And one of the popular organizations that um, are there is called Swarthen, which is a relay relay services for deaf people. Um, and if you would like to know more, you could check out the websites where we use most of our um, where we got most of our information from. Swarthen.com, um, the www.asha.com, which we got to um, the devices for deaf people, the ffc.gov, which is um, give you more information about video relay services, caption will give you more information about the TTY, in the language, um, bach.com, which tells you more about the role of an interpreter. Thank you. <laughs> And this is actually how you say interpreter in sign language, and we just thought this was pretty cool. So thank you for listening, and if you have any further questions about interpreting, you can either ask us or look at those websites. Thank you.